So today on this octave day of Easter, we hear this, the famous story of what most people would call Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Don't you feel sorry for this guy? Right? Makes one off-the-cuff remark 2,000 years ago, and we still can't let it go. Why is he not believing Thomas? After all, that's how he ends the story. He ends up with, in faith and belief. But no, he's got to be doubting Thomas. And in that, there is an important message for all of us. Just as Thomas has been put into a box 2,000 years ago, never to be let out again, as doubting, we do the same thing all the time. Right? We put people in a box. Right? And it might be as offhand as Thomas's remark. You have one little encounter with somebody and that person is blank. And into blank box that person goes, never to be let out again. Doesn't matter what happens. That person is blank. And by the time you're five or six years old, you're doing this, you're carrying an awful lot of stuff around with you, aren't you? Right? And by the time you get to be an adult, right, the card catalog of the Library of Congress would not be able to contain all of the, the boxes and indexes for the boxes that you're carrying around. Right? He's lazy. She's mean. He's nasty. She offended me when I was in third grade. Right? We put them all in a box and they never get out. There's an important message there for us. Because what do we do when we do that? Two things. First off, we strip away from that other person their God-given right of freedom. They are no longer free anymore. He is selfish, condemned for eternity to be selfish. Now, the only person that thinks that is me. Right? But I, in a certain sense, have taken away that person's freedom because no matter what that person does, they will never not be selfish. Because even if they do something nice, it'll be, ah, he's just putting on a show. Right? He's really selfish. The other problem with that is something we've already alluded to. We not only take away the freedom of that person, but we also take away our own freedom because we're carrying all this stuff around with us. We're carrying all this stuff around with us, right? It gets complicated to remember who's selfish and who's nasty after a while, right? Sometimes I make mistakes, right? Oh, you're not selfish, you're nasty, I'm sorry, right? We take away people's freedom and we deprive ourselves of our own God-given gift of liberty. You've probably, many of you have probably seen an incredibly powerful movie called The Mission, it's very old. Most of the people are probably dead by now, probably, who were in that movie. But it's about the Jesuit missions in, in Brazil, in South America. And hagiographical hey, in a certain sense, but that's okay. Everybody's entitled to their own story, right? But one of the key figures in the story is about a guy who was a slave trader, a conquistador, right? Who realizes the mistake he has made and decides he wants to become a Jesuit himself and become a part of, you know, the Society of Jesus. And as he's journeying with them through the jungle, going to the new mission, he's carrying behind him his armor and all this stuff that he used to hurt people, and he's dragging it behind him, and it's wearing him down. And eventually he can't drag it anymore. He's exhausted. And in his kindness, the, the Jesuit, who's already a Jesuit, sort of 
cuts off the rope and all that stuff washes down a river and he's free. He's free again. Free as God had made him. That's the point of the exercise, isn't it? To be forgiving, to be merciful, to to use an important word for the day, as it were. But we have a hard time with that, don't we? And sometimes we can trick ourselves into thinking there's a way around this. Right? So let's say, give an example. I'll, I'll use a silly example first. You rob a bank, right? And you, and you know, you got $20,000 in unmarked bills without, without an exploding pack. You got lucky, right? And you feel bad about it. So you take your satchel and you go into the confessional. And you say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I robbed a bank. Now, he's expecting for you to say, oh, you're forgiven, my son. Say it, our Father. Go, you know, don't do it again. And let me say the magic words. I absolve you of all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the mentality sometimes we bring to confession. This happens all, I used a silly example, but it happens all the time. Right? People will come in and say, I stole something from work. Well, did you give it back? Well, no. Why are you here? Right? No, we never say that. That wouldn't be good. That's not a good pastoral exchange, right? This is not the place and time to yell at people. But that's what you think. <laughs> or... My sister really hurt me when I was in third grade. And I can't let it go. And I'm sorry that I'm angry at her. Have you forgiven her? No, I still hate her. Why are you here? This is not magic. But sometimes we treat it that way, don't we? It's a whole lot harder to go deal with your sister than it is to go into the little box and say, I hate my sister, and say you're our father and get on your way. That's a whole lot easier, isn't it? And if you think that's effective, God bless you. But that's not the point of the exercise, is it? In the opening prayer this morning, excuse me, This is too good not to read it right. So it's it's talking about, you know, we've come to this Paschal Feast of everlasting mercy that we all, all of us, might grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, and by whose blood we have been redeemed. Today is the octave day of Easter. Every day of this past week has been Easter. We get a whole week of Easter. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget what Easter is about. Because you can't have Easter without Good Friday. Come into the box and just figure you can just... Tell the, tell the guy behind the screen what you did wrong and you're going to get off the hook. That's Easter without Good Friday. Right? You got to take the whole package. Right? If you don't, it's magic. Right? And no amount of going to confession, no matter how you can say the prayers for the rest of your life, and it's not going to get around that. Right? The Lord has been incredibly merciful to us. We do not deserve it. Nobody in this room does, especially myself. Right? But the reality is, if I was the only human being that ever lived, if I was Adam, or you were Adam or Eve, 
Jesus still would have come and done what he did. And in fact, the same thing probably would have happened. Think about that for a minute. Just think about that, not for a minute. Take that home with you. If you were the only person that ever lived, would the story have been any different? I can only speak for myself. We have been given the incredible gift of divine mercy. But brothers and sisters, the only way to get that gift is to give it. Think back of the prayer that Jesus taught us that we will say in a few moments. Right? Forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you want divine mercy, be merciful. 